Tiny houses and permaculture often go hand in hand as families come together to share and look after the land. Today we're about to visit one family who have built a beautiful tiny house on a permaculture property that can only be described as my version of paradise. G'day Murray. G'day Bryce. Nice to meet you mate. You too. And how wonderful to see your home. This just looks amazing. Thank you. Mm. Tell me a little bit about what actually inspired you to build a tiny house on wheels. Oh, well, I saw the concept. There was a guy in a workshop where I was renting a space uh, building a tiny house. And I thought it was interesting, but kind of like, why would you not just get a caravan? And then circumstances unfolded where we needed to get out of our house. And there was the choice between like going back into the rental market, which I really didn't want to do, or, or, or finding some solution. And that's when the penny dropped about why you would build a tiny house. So tell me about the construction of this house. Well, it's, uh, it's built on a two-ton trailer. When I started looking into prices of trailers, I just couldn't afford what they were asking. Uh, so it ended up just being a four meter car trailer. It's a wooden frame, a, l a lot of recycled stuff just out of uh, necessity and also out of my interest and passion for upcycling and being thrifty and, and innovative. It was like a, you know sometimes, sometimes you build up to something <laughs> like you might be like I'm scared of heights so I'm going to go skydiving. It was, it was like doing that every day because <laughs> cause I've never built a house so, so <laughs> everything was new so it would be like okay today I'm going to you know build a window frame and okay now today I'm going to install it or today I'm going to do the plumbing and it was it was like this marathon of threshold crossing and initiations so it was it was stimulating exciting intense exhausting but you know the most satisfying thing i've ever done i think this house just looks so incredibly unique tell me a little bit about the design concept when when you came to actually you've got your trailer how did you actually go from there when it comes to constructing this well i guess it's like okay what what's this house got to do for us because we're a family of three We've got a, a six-year-old daughter. She was, I think, four. We've been in here for two years. So she, she would have been three when I started designing. You know, it was like starting off, what do we need it to do? We're, we're on a farm. It needs to be very practical. And then once I designed it, we did it all on SketchUp and that sort of thing. And once I was sort of looking at it, I was like, oh, it kind of looks like a boat. So you tie it in a bit of a nautical theme, like there's, there's little portal windows. So it's four metres long, but it looks a bit higher than ordinary. It is, yeah. It's uh, four and a half metres high, right. so, which I think is about 20 centimetres above the road limit. But if we do want to move it, we can take out like that wedge and fold the ceiling down. So I've built it with hinges at the back, uh, so it can do that if we need to. It would be a pain, but it's possible. And this tiny house, it's totally off the grid as well, isn't it? It's almost totally off the grid. I ended up getting a good pair of batteries and running at 24 volt, and it runs everything except the fridge and the occasional appliance like toasters. So we've got, a, we've got a cord that runs from from the shed. But you know, when the power goes off, we have lights and, and I can plug in the aquaponics and that sort of thing. Gotcha, and I can see you're collecting rainwater here. We collect, yeah, all the water we need. We tend to use it just for washing, some gardening. Um, the grey water feeds into a, a garden system. It is amazing how much water you can uh, actually catch. And we, we get good rainfall here too. Living the dream. Yeah. And the spot that you've chosen for this house as well, and the way that you've built these gorgeous gardens around it is just perfect, isn't it? Yeah. So we're a community of three families and we all hold as a kind of a central tenant the importance of having access to local food that we, we've we grown, that we know what's gone into the soil, we know uh, we're in touch with the seasons, in, in, you know, like if it's been raining a lot or not enough and how that impacts our food and everything has a richer story and tastes better because we have that connection to it and especially nowadays like we are exploring ways of coming off this uh, fossil fuel addiction you know where in the past it's been very possible to to get a you know a big chunk of land like 100 acres get your tractor get your pesticides but you know it hasn't been good for our health it hasn't been good for the health of the land uh, whereas with permaculture you know it's a lot more down to earth and you need people power and we learn to work together and to get along and to to prosper in a, in a 
you know, in a way that's more connected, more, more in touch with realities. So living in community for the first couple of years was quite challenging for me because we were all trying to do everything together and it was almost like marrying each other because uh, we all had young kids at that time and now I think we're at a point where we're starting to really complement each other and we're doing things that we love but not trying to do everything and, and I also I think we're not trying to be totally off grid but you know we're taking the, the small steps that we can really to, to live a little more consciously. Yeah what becomes obvious is that we're not used to well yeah. in, in my case not really used to cooperating so intimately with other people so the first thing to get over was like or to learn was a lot of compromise and so you can often if you can keep the communication channels open you can often come up with a solution to have everyone's needs met that an individual mightn't have thought of and i like to think of it in terms of games like how can we find a win-win game of where we all we all get our needs met and be a bit light with it as well like none of us are experts in anything so a lot of it's just being a bit playful and you know having the courage to just try things out and be okay with mistakes and learn learn from them seeing see them as opportunities rather than something's gone wrong <laughs> and I think we're all up for that which is good yeah well I am very intrigued to see what you've done on the inside can we have a look sure come all on right in. thank you oh this is beautiful I love how walking in, immediately, there's stuff that's just kind of happening on all levels in here, isn't there? Yeah, like, I mean, we've got that, uh, we call that the catwalk, which is utilising the headspace over the couch, and, um, yeah, that creates a second story, effectively, that you can stand up in, which I think is rare when you're talking mezzanines. So I thought, you know, it's a good, good to use that, and then, you know, we've got the old levels happening here, including the spices on the roof. So tell me about the design of the kitchen. Well, it's got a few little tricks that we've tried to um, bring in to utilise the space. For example, uh, you know, the old breadboard over the sink. And then a really important part is this pull-out shelf here. And right. That, that's just ready to go whenever you've got shopping or, or especially when you've got dishes, you know, you just pile them there. And then when it's clean, we, we put it back and so it's always free. We've got the dish rack storage, so there's no double handling. You just wash the dishes, pop them there, and they're done. And we try and do that with everything, basically. Like, once it's washed, it goes where it dries, and, and, and then it's just ready for use. And then we've got the wood stove over in that corner. That's got an oven in it, and that's what we use for cooking uh, on, the, on the top, uh, an oven, space heating, and water heating in the Excellent. winter. Uh, in the summer, we use an outdoor oven. Very multifunctional yeah. and it fits perfectly into that space as well, doesn't it? Yeah, it was literally made for that space I, I you know, we had that space there and I measured it up and made sure that it fits like we've got one of these baking dishes here So that, that's kind of like if you'd have a roast chicken or something that, that that's what it was made around So you actually made the oven in the space? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I welded that up. That was actually um, made from a lot of the metal that was left over from the trailer because it was a heavy-duty trailer with that checker plate stuff along the bottom and I cut all that out and then I used that for um, for making the oven. And then you've got your seating and dining space here as well. Yeah, that's modular. So we've got three cubes basically that are boxes and we keep our um, sort of the unopened stuff like flour and cans and stuff in there. And then we've got the open stuff, you know, ice cream cones, just the essentials. And then down here we've got a toaster and a rice cooker. When you're living in a small space, it must be very, very hard to feel cramped when you look out on this sort of expansive, beautiful valley and those imposing mountains in the background. Absolutely, yeah. You can feel small looking at them, but the space doesn't feel small. Yeah. yeah. So what do we have around the corner there? So, this is the bathroom. Right. Is that a wooden tub? It is, yeah. It's inspired by a Japanese Afuro hot tub. So the idea being that it's kind of short and deep, and I imagine myself uh, up to my neck in hot water in that one. Yeah, I yeah. bet. And this is made out of wood. How did you actually do that? Well, I initially just made the box and, th and glued it and screwed it, and then got some epoxy and really worked in on the joins 
heavily with that and a few layers of that and then just layers and layers of polyurethane a bit like a boat i guess it's pretty cool and this curtain um turns this into the dressing room very yeah, nice so it cuts it off from the main room and you've got a little bit of uh, storage here as well as a step to get in for, for particularly for gracie have you actually tried out the bathtub yet no i haven't tried out the bathtub i think probably because we've got a fire tub outside which we use so at the moment it's just a glorified shower cubicle and in the nook around the corner. Yeah. So this is, we're now over the tow bar area. And this is designed to be a study. And then it also acts as a step up to Gracie's room. And we've got a bookshelf there that doubles as a staircase to get into the trap door as Gracie's entrance. What a clever idea. So she's got the main entrance there, but her own little secret way of getting into the exactly. loft. Exactly. She must love that. Yeah, yeah. It's that little thing. It's like kids love secrets. Yeah. Yeah. And what a cool idea as well, because this does just act like a little private area for her to have a little bit more space in the home as well to herself, doesn't it? Yeah, well, she's got a, she's got a small space, you know, and um, I've tried to incorporate just an, an area where she can just hang out and have her own space. And speaking of the loft areas, let's have a look at your loft. Sure. So it's a bit different to a normal ladder. You've just got to uh, walk with uh, your left foot here and your right foot there, and you just climb up the wall basically what an unusual way of getting into the loft well i just didn't know where i was going to store the ladder you know it's not a big space so i armed an art over it for for ages and then i think i came across that it might have been jay schaefer had a had a similar idea and i thought yep that's the way to do it vix wasn't convinced and i just did it and i went there you go vix try that and she was like yep yeah, it's good perfect oh, thank goodness and you're totally right about having this mezzanine area here in the loft as well, because we can both stand perfectly and comfortably yeah. in this area. And when you think about it, like a bedroom's only a bed and some floor space, all we've done is we've inhabited under the bed with the kitchen, you know? Yeah. So, and, and we've got the floor space, which was stolen from the headspace above the couch. So, you know, it's just playing Tetris with uh, spaces that you don't need. And then this is uh, Gracie's room in here, is it? Yes, it is. This is such a cute little space. Yeah, it's like a little cubby house. The doors here, and they're, they're soundproof, so we can close that and put Gracie to bed and watch a movie or whatever. And then on the other side, there's a door that opens out on to what will be the deck. I mentioned before, it's a little bit like a boat, so that'll be like the prow of a ship out so there. So cool. Yeah, and then, and then you've got these little portal windows continuing that maritime theme. So she's got four directions for good airflow through here. Uh, Vix came up with this idea of, you know, instead of a clothes basket, it's a clothes bag. So it pretty much just shrinks when it's empty and then, and then expands until it's washing time. So they're really clever. And then her storage is just under this little area. She must love this little room. Yeah, she yeah. does, it's her room. Kids need a space to call their own. And then your loft is over here. Yeah. And then you've got all your clothing storage up here as well? Yeah, a bit of Maria Kondo sort of um, rolling up the clothes, uh, continuing a bit of the whole tree aesthetic there. Very inspired by the Wabi Sabi um, design principle, uh, which, you know, utilises a lot of natural shapes. So I've just tried to bring that in with some of the curvy bits of wood and stuff like that. So up here as well, this is where you've got your hot water heater. Yeah, so that's a upcycled hot water system. It's solar, so we've got the heat collector just on the awning that's out on the north side there, out the front of the living space. And uh, yeah, it works really well. So you've got your hot water heater up here, you've got the solar collector outside, your solar panels, composting toilet. Should we go check all that stuff out? Yeah, let's go. All right. Oh, this garden is just lovely. Yeah, we love it. So. First of all, this deck is a fold-out extension from the building, so if it was moved, we could fold it up. And then the next thing is it's got a built-in wicking beds, which utilise the grey water that comes out of the kitchen sink, and it goes through a worm bed and into a filtration system and then comes out and the plants can use it. So we never need to water these, we just pick out all our herbs for dinner and come back in and use them in our meal. And then we've got an aquaponic system over there. Excellent, can you show me the aquaponics? Sure. Setup? 
Yeah, so this is it. Utilising some more of the hard garbage, throw out stuff from the local tiff shop. Yeah, all these uh, all these old tubs. Yeah, they're brilliant. We love bathtubs around here. We can't get enough of them. Yeah. <laughs> so so basically what you've got is a, a fish tank down here. Our aquaponics has trout in it. And they are pooing into the water. And then the water's getting pumped up to these grow beds continuously. And then they are, there's a device called a bell siphon which, which cyclically fills and empties the tank and so then that fills up the tubs and the plants use up all of the nutrients and there's a bacteria culture in there that's transforming the ammonia from the fish into usable nitrates for the plants so that cleans the water and then it goes back down to the fish from here across we sort of move into the market garden area where we grow a lot of our own food uh, and then also food for sale so over here we've got a what's called a mandala system which incorporates chickens, fruit trees, perennial crops and seasonal crops all in a moving successional kind of dynamic and uh, yeah it's all about you know moving the nutrients where you need it when you need it without kind of having to bring stuff in and take stuff out you know it's all just yeah. using what's there. And so what about the uh, toilet here? So we've got an outdoor composting toilet and it's housed over here underneath the solar panels so there's so a there composting it is. toilet oh, in there glory so just a simple bucket composting system yeah it's as simple as you get and being here on a permaculture farm i'm sure you've got no end of uses for the compost absolutely the more the better yeah, yeah we'd never dream of uh trying to get rid of it yeah just transform it into a state that it's usable so does the human manure get added to your existing compost setup or do you have a different composting system for your human manure yeah, we have an exclusive system for the human manure, uh, and then that'll be used on the fruit trees when it's ready. Great. Yeah. Nice and simple. So how long have you actually been living here now in total? We've been in the tiny house for two years. And how's it all working out for you? Yeah, we've loved it and we've just started to find that, that living here is giving us you know, more energy, more time, because we're not servicing a house, we're not servicing a loan. We're just uh, setting up systems that, that now feed us, you know, and they, they require minimal input, you know, and it's all just taking care of itself. And what about the cost of setting all this up? So when we moved in two years ago, the total cost was $13,000. So I had a lot of time to build, uh, but not a lot of money was coming in, but it, it just trickled in and we never got into debt, never had to borrow and, it, and just mm -hmm. at the end of the year after building a house, it kind of had the same bank balance as, as at the beginning. And, and I think that had a lot to do with how the build unfolded because, you know, if you don't, if someone gives you a bunch of wood and it's full of nails and, and you've got a lot of time, and not a lot of money, you'll sit and pull the nails out. But I think it was really good for the for the build to not actually have much money because mm. it, it made me look for for Be other creative. ways. You're just like, how can I save money? I, I, I like the idea that um, thrift can lead to thriving as well. You know, just by being resourceful and using what's on hand and, and keeping it simple and keeping mm. it local. Yeah. And what about the cost of actually being here on the land? Well, it's the normal rates, I guess. Uh, we are servicing a loan to buy in to the land as well. So that, I guess we're paying what you'd normally pay in a rental situation, except it's not, it's not just down the drain, it's, it's an investment. Well, an investment it certainly is. This is an incredible property, a beautiful house, and a wonderful, wonderful setup for your family. Thank, Thank you. you so much for sharing your home with me. Pleasure, Bryce. This tiny house is a truly remarkable home. So much thought has gone into its design. So much effort has gone into the clever sourcing of materials. And one of the things that I like most about this space is the way that it's really designed to work with the outside world. Because in the end, it's out there that we live our lives. But at the end of a long day, what an incredible place to come home to.